This is Stephen E. Arnold, publisher of Beyond Search, presenting the second part of the Google Trilogy. Google, version two, The Calculating Predator. In the Google Legacy video, we talked about Google's quick capture of the web search market. Google built a variant of the goto.com pay for traffic approach, but adapted it to show ads related to a user's query. Search for Chevrolet and see automobile ads. In this video, I summarize some of the findings of our research about Google as it became a calculating predator, a shift which began in earnest after Google's going public in 2004. Between 2004 and 2007, Google shifted gears, changing from a startup into a large public company, which had to generate growth and profits every 12 weeks. Google version two documents this shift. After its IPO, Google looked much the same to users, but inside the company, resources were flooding to project designed to open new markets. In contrast to its startup days, Google had a vision of becoming the gateway to the internet and online services. It had a goal of becoming a $100 million company. Google version two took shape over 36 months, and by the end of 2007, the transformation was almost complete. Google's infrastructure, or plumbing, shifted from a web search focus system to a stack, or an operating system for diversified online products and services. In its simplest form, the Google platform provided an efficient, scalable system somewhat similar to the old Bell telephone approach to its monopoly. Search was like local calls to Ma Bell, but with a twist. Revenue was based on at selling advertisers access to web search users, not asking users paying to call someone. And its approach to innovation also changed. As the number of employees grew, Google stepped up its acquisition of companies to obtain people, capabilities, products, ideas, and services. Google's in-house innovation required an external transfusion. The Google Legacy's Googzilla crushed web search competitors. Google version two selected targets using data analysis to pursue and subdue. Google used its technology to gain a competitive advantage and a cost advantage. Like most predators, the work was conducted silently and, if possible, in a way that was difficult to detect until the company pounced as it did with mobile phones and maps. Google's data management technology has been a technical pivot point. Google version 2's most impressive products depended on organizing, indexing, finding, and presenting information of a dynamic nature. To take one example, Google acquired Keyhole and got serious about mapping. A high resolution from 2006 makes it possible to see a camel and observe details of a water well in a remote area of the world in a way previously only available to those with access to classified satellite imagery. Google embraced smart software as part of its version two remake. The company acquired Transformic, which is one example of the firm's forward-looking steps to add intelligence to data analysis. The idea was that Google's data would function as a knowledge base, which other Google services could use quickly and without time-consuming reprocessing and reformatting. Instead of inventing additional ad technology, Google bought DoubleClick 
and beefed up its capabilities for delivering on-point ads to advertisers. Google's recent change in its privacy policy allows Google's smart advertising software to direct information about individual behaviors via an enhanced double-click system. As part of the Google version 2 transformation, Google approached, encouraged an explosion of products. Many of these faded quickly and others lingered. But the flood of Google services had one significant effect. Competitors and companies outside the online search market became increasingly nervous about Google's reach and power. In Google version 2, Google probed a number of what seemed like unrelated markets. We reported about entertainment and YouTube, telephones in form of mobile search software and hardware, publishing, think in terms of Google Maps, enterprise software systems like the Google Search Appliance, financial services, Google's payment system for online advertising, back office and retail marketing, the online advertising and ad metrics business. Mobile became a key pivot point. In fact, one of Google's key inventions for voice search was the work of Sergey Brin, a Google founder. The company even moved into social media with its Orkut acquisition. What's interesting is that Google was not able to make social media a success despite its early entry into the market. Under Google Snout, Amazon emerged as the dominant force in e-commerce. Today, Google has traction in mobile, enterprise software and services, and entertainment. This is a batting average of 500. Excellent on some yardstick. The core of Google's version two is what we called Google's policy of instrumental pragmatism. Google decided using logic, mathematics, and data, not intuition. When Google version two found itself the target of alleged monopolistic behavior, the new version of friendly Google was a surprise to some users. Google was not friendly. The colorful logo was out of step, and the catchphrase, do no evil, seemed like an anachronism. For daily reports about online search and content processing, read Beyond Search, the free weblog, which tries to separate the giblets from the goose feathers. This is Stephen E. Arnold, logging off.